Hi, I'm Steve. You're watching Gear Stuff and Things, and today we're going to check out three pedal sized power amps. Stick around. Alright, so like I said at the front of the video, we're checking out three pedal sized power amps. Up first, we have the More Baby Bomb, which is a tiny pedal sized 30 watt amp. Pretty cool. And then we have the Electro Harmonics Magnum 44, which is the MXR sized pedal, and it is a 44 watt amp, as you know the name explains. And lastly, we're going to check out the Seymour Duncan Power Stage 170, which is a 170 watt amp. That is slightly bigger. It's a bigger real estate in general. Uh, still small enough to fit on a pedal board should you want to. And uh, it's got a built-in EQ that is uh, active, so you can do some tinkering for live use of your environment in which you feel like you're not hearing enough high end or mid or whatever. You can tinker to it, uh, tinker with it. It is uh, more designed to adhere to whatever live setting. All right, so let's jump into checking these out tonally. Uh, our signal chain is the HX stomp going into each of these pedals into a 212 cabin I built that is uh, one Eminence Wizard and one Warehouse Guitar Speakers Company. Warehouse Guitar Speakers, WGS, Vet 30, uh, which is their answer to the Vintage 30. And uh, that's going to be mic'd up with the Sennheiser 609. Let's check those out. Alright, so now that you've heard all three of the amps with the HX Stomp, let's talk a little bit about each of them individually and the pluses and minuses, pros and cons of each. So up first was the More Baby Bomb. Um, plenty of volume on tap, as you can see in the video. I'm barely at 9 o'clock in the room. It's quite loud. If you get louder than that, it, it gets really loud. I mean, that's, that's each one of these things is incredibly loud. Um, the Baby Bomb has a bit more of an amp-like response than the 44, um, but that being said, it is slightly less in wattage. I can't really tell a difference as far as how detailed it is in volume. I just know as you increase the volume with the Baby Bomb, it acts more like a traditional preamp with a little bit of sag in response. Um, there's a bright switch, obviously increases the brightness. Uh, I found that that is not something you can just leave on, unfortunately, unless you adjust all of your settings inside of your uh, processor, you know, your Helix or Kemper or Axifex to accommodate for that. But I found if you switch between guitars and one guitar is a little darker, you might want to turn it on. If you're switching to a guitar that's a little brighter in character, you probably want to turn it off. So take that into consideration. But with the Baby Bomb, sounds great. As you increase the volume, it acts 
more and more like a traditional amp and how it responds to the input volume. Moving to the 44, similar uh, in response, has the bright switch as well. I feel like the Moore's bright switch is much more exaggerated than the 44, so if you just want a tiny boost in your treble, uh, the 44 is probably the better choice. Obviously it has a bit more wattage on tap. Like I said, I couldn't really tell a difference. They're both quite loud at just nine o'clock. If you increase them further, they're incredibly loud. They would work in a band setting with no issue. Uh, the one downside, well, there's two downsides to these. Two downsides to these littler ones. Um, certain cabinets, speaker combinations, they don't care for. So, uh, for example, I used a Mesa 412 that has vintage 30s in it, and uh, we're gonna get four ohm. And the Magnum 44 pushed it no problem, uh, no issues at all. The Baby Bomb couldn't push it. It kept crapping out, and I'll include a little clip of that. And uh, I had the same issue on an Orange 412 running at eight ohms or 16 ohms, I can't recall. But either way, I tried multiple cabinets with different homage and got different responses. I reached out to Electro Harmonics because I had issues with the orange cabinet with that pedal uh, with the 44 and they told me that it may be a power supply issue. So I switched the power supply out. Same result, but again, switching to a different cabinet with matching homage and wattage outputs, it worked. So I'm not really sure what the issue is there. Maybe mine is just finicky, but like I said, the baby bomb did something somewhere as well. And you'll see that. Um, secondly from that is that the power sources are proprietary and they require a bit more wattage than a traditional power supply. So if you're using the power supply on your pedal board, it might not be enough to power that, especially if you're using something like Stomp that requires extra power. So you're gonna need couplers and things. I'm sure there's a way to do it, but I was unable to get it to work on a traditional Voodoo Labs power supply. So take that into consideration. You may want to uh, work with that. If you have one of the bigger ones that has the option to plug stuff in, it may work fine. It may also be worth your time just to put it closer to your cabinet and the amp outlet where you are. Moving on to the 170. 170 is uh, significantly more, um, we'll call it realistic and feel to an amp. It has an, a preamp built into it, an active EQ system. So it definitely reacts a lot more like a clean channel and amp than the other two do, where they're more as a power platform and volume. This one actually feels like an amp if you turn off your processor altogether and you just play into it clean, it sounds like an amp. It's designed to function more like an amp, so if you were just to plug pedals in front of it, it would feel like the clean channel of an amp. So that is the biggest selling point to me of the 170 is that it just sounds and feels like an amp. And with the active EQ, you can tweak it to the room you're in. So if you're not hearing enough low end or enough highs or mids or whatever, you just want to be heard in a room full of instruments. There's a lot of tweaking you can do in order to be heard better. From there, uh, power supply, uh, standard IEC cable. Not hard to find, tons of those around. If you lose it, not a big deal. You can find another one pretty easily. Walgreens occasionally sells those, so I mean, no issues there with power supply. It won't plug directly into most pedal sized power supplies. However, uh, some of the bigger like Voodoo Labs power supplies and such have the ability to allow you to plug uh, an external power source in. So it is possible to run it off of your pedal, uh, pedal board as well. So there's that. All in all, they're all great. They're all very functional. As far as portability, they're all incredibly portable. The biggest one is, you know, slightly bigger than the MXR pedal, a little more thick. Uh, but overall, they all do a great job. The 170 is obviously going to provide you more flexibility with what cabinets you can pick because you have more wattage to push out and it can handle more. So you could use it with a 412 or something bigger with no problem whatsoever. You're not going to run into any of the issues you're going to run into with the smaller ones because they have a limited a limited output of wattage, so they're going to shut down at a certain point when they can't handle what's being put in front of them. So uh, that's it. I would say if you are looking into these, if you want something that's just super portable, that sounds good and will work well with something like a Kemper, a Kemper or an Axe FX or a Helix, any of them would work. If you want something tiny, go with Baby Bomb or the 44. 
they will fit in your pocket or any bag. Um, it's always a good idea to have a backup too. Maybe get one and just keep it in your bag if your amp shuts down, you've got it to use or whatever the scenario is. Again, it's all a taste thing. Hopefully this video is helpful to you. Uh, thanks so much for watching. And uh, if you didn't watch the last video, I recently started a Patreon. So if you're interested in supporting the channel a little bit further, please head over to the link. I'll put it in the description. You can check it out and see what tier you're interested in. I'll have a lot of exclusive content, exclusive videos. Everything you're seeing here is going to come to you sooner and things like uh, patches and things like that will be available to you. So uh, go check that out if you're interested and you want to support the channel further. Uh, if not, no big deal. Thanks for watching. It's been me. It's been you. Dear Stuff and Things. That's a TV that uh, used to have Nick Hill on it, but it's gone blank as I've been talking too long. 